Hi, I'm Ms. Hearn. Let's get started. The conical tank with vertex down is 10 feet across at the top and 12 feet deep. Water is flowing into the tank at a rate of 10 cubic feet per minute. Find the rate of change of the depth of the water when the water is 8 feet deep. So we have a cone turned upside down. Water is flowing into this cone. So at a certain moment in time, there's going to be a certain water level. So let's go ahead and label the depth of the water H. How would I write then the rate of change of the height of the water? It's gonna have something to do with dh. dh over what? Is time passing? Yeah, right? It's talking about water flowing into the tank over time, right? So yes, so what we're looking for is dh dt. The change in the depth of the water over time. Yeah. They tell us that the tank itself is 10 feet across and 12 feet deep. As the height h increases, it's going to range from 0 all the way up to the maximum of 12. Okay, what else is changing? What other dimension is changing as the height changes? The, the width or radius, I'm gonna call this a radius because that's circular, right? So that radius is going to get bigger and bigger, isn't it? Water is flowing into the tank at a rate of 10 cubic feet per minute. What is that referring to? Volume, right? The amount of water is measured as a volume and the cubic, the cubic thing is a hint, right? That we're talking about volume. Volume's always cubed. Water is flowing into the tank at a rate rate tells you that the variable we're going to write down is not just going to be an x or a v, right? What is it going to be? A dv dt. So they're telling us here that dv dt is equal to what? 10. Okay, so dv dt is 10 cubic feet per minute. When the water is 8 feet deep, what is that telling us? The height, right? h equals eight now this changes over time but at some moment in time the height is going to be eight feet now we need a relationship between dh dt and dv dt in order to get that relationship we need a relationship between h and v okay the formula for the volume of a cone will probably be helpful let's see v equals one third the area of the base, which I'm gonna call capital B, times the height. So in this case, the area of the base is gonna be pi r squared, because it's a circle. So the volume of a cone is one third times pi r squared times h. Notice that the variable that I was given, h and dv dt, I was given, and I was asked to find dh dt. Did you see any r's in there anywhere? No. Isn't it true that R depends on H? Let's stop thinking three-dimensionally because that kind of makes your brain hurt. So let's come over here. You see this? See this cone? You see if I took a slice right out of the middle of it and looked at just half of it that there would be a right triangle in there? Let's let's take an let's analyze just this piece of it, this right triangle portion of it. The 12 and the 5 is the outs the biggest part. And then inside, you see the radius R there? All right, so what I'm saying is this is one triangle inside of another. They're both right triangles. And in fact, they both have this angle in common, don't they, down at the tip? What kind of triangles are those? Similar triangles. In other words, if the big outside part of the triangle, if the ratio of these two sides is 5 to 12, R over H should always be the proportion 5 over 12. H, at some moment in time, H will be 8. But remember, the whole context of the problem is that water is flowing into this, right? So this is varying. This yellow part, this is growing. It's, but what we do know is it's always going to be in a proportion of 5 to 12. So how can I write R? R equals what? 5 twelfths of H. Since we don't have any information about the radius over here, how about instead we replace the r in this formula with 5 twelfths of h, because we do have information about h. We don't ever use any of this until we have a formula relating the rate and the time. This is at a particular moment in time. 
and this is a relationship in general. We cannot differentiate. If we plug 8 in for H and then differentiate, yeah, you'll get zero exactly, okay? Because that's at that moment in time, it's constant. So we never plug any of that information in until we have our relationship between dV dt and dH dt. We don't want to differentiate both sides of this volume formula with respect to time because we have an R in there we don't know how to deal with. So instead, let's go ahead and write what R is equal to in terms of H. And that makes everything work out nicely. We'll have V equals one third pi instead of r squared we have five twelfths h quantity squared times h now we have a relationship between v and h and now we can find the derivative to get the relationship between dv dt and dh dt we're going to have 25 over 144 times one third v equals 25 over 432 times pi times h cubed. Now we have our formula relating v and h, so we're going to use that to get the formula relating dv dt to dh dt. So taking the derivative with respect to time of both sides, the coefficients stay the same. 3h squared dh dt. dv dt equals... 25 over 144 pi h squared dh dt.